10 newtons is going to be the only force that's causing an acceleration, and the mass is going to be 2, so the A is going to be 5 meters per second squared. Now, once you get the A, then you can use the laws of uh, kinematics or whatever. Uh, so this one we could use uh, the third equation, right? The V final squared is V initial squared, the one that doesn't have a T in it. So V initial would be 0. V final would be square root of 2 times 5 times 15. So it would be square root of uh, 75 meters per second, which is uh, about 8 or 8 point something, right? Now, now if I can approach this from a work point, point of view, I can say work is defined as the integral of f dot dr, okay? Yeah? What is it? No, no, I, I think I just did uh, 5 times 15. Yeah, so if I do it from the work point of view, so the displacement is 15 uh, meters. So the work is the integral of f dotted into dr. Well, in this case, we don't re uh, really do have to need to do an integral because the f is a constant, right? So um, when you take the dot product of, the, of this, since the force is a constant, it just becomes f dotted into the displacement vector. So it's no longer an integral. Okay, so then uh, the force, well, the displacement vector is to the right, and the force is to the right, right? So the force is what? Uh, 15, no, the force is 10 i hat, right? Dotted into, and what's the displacement vector? 15 i hat. So dot product of those two vectors, which is just 10 times 15, the i hat dotted into i hat is 1, right? So so with the work approach, you don't, have, you don't ask the question, f equals ma, what's the a? You just ask, how much work does that force do on that object? It does 150 joules of work on that object. So work is something that I'm doing to it. Whereas F equals MA is, I'm pulling it, the A is its acceleration as an outcome of the force, you see? Whereas work is something that I'm doing to it by dragging it. Okay, then I use the work energy, the work kinetic energy uh, uh, theorem. In a minute, I'll, dr I, I'll derive that equation. It's this equation here, work equals changing kinetic energy, and kinetic energy is defined as half mv squared. So I'll show you the derivation of that. Okay, so I'm going to use that equation with this. So I'm going to say you do 150 joules of work on it, and then you have a half mv final squared minus half mv initial squared. Okay, so if V initial is zero, and then the mass was what? Uh, was it two kilograms? So two kilograms. So you put two here, and then two and a two cancel. V final is square root of one fifty. Same answer, right? So with the work energy approach, uh, I don't uh, ask the question, what is the A? I just say, how much work do I do on the object? And what is its initial kinetic energy? What is its final kinetic energy? 
and uh, just take the difference between the two and set the work equal to that, okay? Now, one of the things that is kind of different with the two approaches is also the work energy approach kind of doesn't care about what's going on in the middle. I mean, even though it really does care because you're dragging it, but it just takes the energy in the beginning, energy at the end, and takes the work equal to that, right? So what's going on in the middle is not as important. The F equals MA says, okay, you're dragging it. What is the A along the direct all the way? And then f using that A, find the final V, okay? So which approach do you guys like better now between the two? So if I just give you that kind of problem, let's say, and I say use either approach, which one would you guys pick on the test? Work energy? Yeah? How many would work, work energy here? Oh, majority. How many force they're, they like Newton? Nobody? Poor Newton, man. Come on, he suffered all that, discovered all that law. Come on. Oh, no. Now I kind of feel bad for taking that. Uh, did I? Did I had this on, right? Okay, for some reason I thought I didn't turn it on. Yeah, so poor old Newton did all that work for nothing, huh? Okay, so if we go come to this and um, we want to, let's say, prove this, well, what the informal way of proving it is like this, like a quick kind of proof. Say F equals MA. V final squared is V initial squared plus 2AD, right? Remember, with the first way of doing the problem, I use the combination of those two equations. Well, if you take the A, substitute it into there, so A is equal to what? F over M, right? Substitute it into there. Okay, now multiply everything by m over 2, okay, m over 2, m over 2, m over 2, okay, so what's going to happen? 2, 2, m, m, and then bring this over to this side. Is what? Okay. So, mv final squared minus mv initial squared. So now, what is this? This is this is work. F times d. Okay. Mv final squared minus mv initial squared over two. That's kinetic change in kinetic energy. So really, the work energy theorem is not really a brand new theorem. It's just a reshuffling of the Newton's laws and the uh, kinematics equations, reshuffling them to get a new uh, theorem out of it, okay? The formal proof would be something like this. I would start with the, the definition of uh, work, F, FDR, and then I would write F as MA. And then M, uh, A will be dV dt. Right? Then, Then I could take the dt and shift it under the dr. Calculus allows you to do that. Just like regular math allows you to do that. You know, if you have like uh, x times y over uh, 3, you can, same as x over 3 times y. The 3 can be shifted to in, under anything that you want. So dr dt is v, it's the rate of change of the